Hey, this is Paige from Mosaic Moments, and I'm going to start today's tutorial by introducing you to the 4x6 X-Factor die set. So just now I was holding the frame part, which is the largest piece in the set. There's also this layering die, so you can fit a 4x6 photograph within that frame. There's also this 3x4 frame size and... I had the other one turned the wrong way, but you can line it up with the 3x4 X-Factor die and you can line it up with the 2x4 X-Factor die. So this is optional. I am not going to be using it for my page today. This is the 2x2 X-Factor die and this tiny little die is handy for filling in those corners, which I will also be showing in this tutorial. To create a stunning X-Factor page, I will also be using the 3x4 and the 2x4 X-Factor dies. Plus, I have this die that is from the 4x4 X-Factor die set just to make those photographs a more interesting shape. Before using the X-Factor dies, you'll definitely want to plan your photographs beforehand. You want to take the subjects of your photos and make sure it fits within the X-Factor die shapes. So this one here, I'm actually going to be filling in that top and bottom part of the X-Factor layout. So I made sure my subjects could fit. If you're using people, I do not, and unless there's a rare case of it, I do not cut through people's heads. I'm going to be doing the same thing with the 2 by 4 X-Factor die. I'm making sure my subjects can fit within those small spaces as shown here. So definitely plan out your page beforehand. Make sure your subjects are small enough. And there's also the options to print your photos smaller than a full 4x6 to make sure the subjects fit within the small spaces as well. All right, so let's get started with the tutorial. So first, you want to create your base pieces. So right now I'm cutting with the 4x6 die from set B and the 4x6 X-Factor frame will go on top of this. And now I'm going to use the 3x4 die from set C. And of course, my 3x4 X-Factor die will go with this one. So base pieces are cardstock mats. And the purpose of them is to give your X-Factor dies a bit more sturdiness because they're very thin. So I'll talk about that more when I create my layout. This is the 2x4 die from set B and of course the 2x4 X-Factor die will go on top of this one. And last I'm going to go ahead and use the 3x3 die here from set A. This will be the background for a few of the photographs that will not get the complex X-Factor die cuts. Now that all my mats are cut I'm going to start gluing them on my grid paper with my repositionable glue. This is the Hermandado dispenser. And I'm placing this 4x6 mat basically in the center of my grid paper. And the 2x4 sizes are going to go on the top and bottom. They basically go where there's a more narrow space on the grid paper next to the biggest cut. And the 3x4 dies are going to go in the area where there's more space on both sides of that 4x6 piece. And last, I'm adding these 3x3 three three size squares to fill up the rest of the grid paper. And because these are all down, these will allow you to line up your X-Factor dies more correctly and easily. So I'm getting this last one done. And always take your time when you're adding these pieces to the grid paper. Now I am going to start cutting with the X-Factor dies. This one again is the 4x6 X-Factor die. It's the largest one in the set. And now I'm placing everything in my machine based on the manufacturer's instructions. This is the Sizzix Big Kick die machine, by the way. So once that's rolled through, you can see that frame popped out pretty easily here. And then I have this extra cardstock I can use for another layout. Next, I'm going to cut with the 3x4 X-Factor die with the same color card stock. This is sold separately from the 4x6 X-Factor die in case you're new, figured that'd be good information to know. The paper was stuck, so now I'm using some sharp tweezers and there's little holes in the back of the die to help you get these card stock cuts out. 
Last, now I'm going to cut with the 2x4x factor die. And again, I am using the same card stock. I think it's a nice uniform look to keep all the x-factor dies the same color. All right, now you can add your x-factor cuts to your page. So take your time as you're adding the glue because these are very thin cuts. They can bend and rip apart very easily, so be careful, especially if the cardstock you're using is thin. And so with this base piece, just like here, I'm able to see that the X-Factor die is lined up correctly. And I am using, by the way, you can always grab a piece of cardstock just to make sure you don't get glue all over your page or on your table. And then of course, I'm lining it up. You can see how it lines up here. And this is the purpose of the X-Factor dies is that they are designed to have each of those lines line up together and that's what makes the entire page look so neat in the end. But when you're using these dies, again, you will see they're very thin and when you put them on the grid paper, they kind of warp and sometimes it's difficult to actually get them lined up correctly on the grid paper itself and you're welcome to try it out to see if this will work for you or not. But for me, I really like having these base pieces or the cardstock mats because then you kind of know you have a piece that allows you to see that the X-Factor dies are lined up correctly. And again, it makes them a little stronger because they are very thin to begin with. I've talked about it in past videos. I'll have a link to another X-Factor die video I've done before. You can click on that right now in the top right corner. All right, this is the last one. And because I have this cardstock piece already lined up with the grid paper, I can just place this X Factor cut right on top. And now I can add the photos. As usual, I start with the largest cut. So this is the layering die that is provided in the four by six X Factor die set. And it is sized so that you can fit a four by six photograph within that space. So a four by six photograph really is not big enough to fill in the frame part itself. So we created this layering die so it can still go inside the frame anyway. All right, had the first cut. I did use washi tape because that die does get very close to the edge. So you may want to use washi tape on that one for sure. Now I'm cutting with the three by four X factor die. And again, I made sure my subject fit within that triangular space. So you can do all sorts of things with your photographs. Sometimes you may want your whole photograph to fill in this entire X factor space, but I wanted something a little more unique and I'm actually using two different photographs to fill in this X factor die space. Again, I made sure my subject and this photograph fit that same triangular space, but in the opposite direction. And yes, when you cut your photographs, pay attention to which way those X factor dies are pointing. So your subject is facing the right direction. So it won't be upside down when you put it on your layout. So I wanted this photograph and this one here to fill in the top and bottom portions. And again, I made sure my subject, the person on the bottom was not going to get cut through with one of the lines. I personally find it to be better designed to not cut your people. In some cases, maybe you have to do that, but that's just me. And again, here I made sure the little boy fits within that space on the bottom without any part of him getting cut through. All right, so I'm cutting this one. And again, I'm not gonna, the photo may not look cut in the video, but it actually is cut. And then when, before I put them on the page, I'm gonna pull it apart. This is the two by four X factor die and I'm doing the same thing as before where I'm making sure my subject fits within that small space. So I'm gonna be cutting with this one four times. If your photo can't fit, um, you can always use a pair of scissors to trim it down and then roll it through the machine. And again, just like before, when you use this die, you want to make sure that your photo's going in the, being cut in the direction you want it to be on the layout. 
And again here you notice my subject. He was the photograph needed to be printed smaller so he could fit in that little tiny space. All right, and this is the last one. Probably, yeah, I'm gonna cut it again with scissors so it can fit through the dye machine. Then I'm gonna roll it through. Again, the photo is cut, but I'm just keeping it together until I put my photograph on the layout. And last, these four photographs are gonna be cut with this octagon die. This is an optional die. You do not have to use it with the X Factor sets. I just wanted my photos to have a more interesting cut than just the typical square shape. And this die can be found in the 4x4 X Factor die set. So that set has the 4x4 X Factor die that fits the grid, and then it has several layering type of dies that you can use in the X Factor set. And again, it's optional. I haven't used it every time I use the X Factor dies, but this time I thought it would add a little more interest. All right, and as you can see, it's pretty easy to use. They're just like the basic die sets you place on the photo that you want to crop and then roll it through the machine as I'm doing here, and then you're done. And it's ready to be added to your layouts. Okay, I have my repositionable glue again and I did not separate my photos. I didn't want the little pieces to get scrambled everywhere. So this way I can keep them a little more organized. And as you can see, I'm just gluing right on the back on the parts I want to place on my layout. And then it's easy to just pull those pieces apart. Anyway, I just think keeping the photograph together um, helps you stay more organized. All right, so pretty much done with all the three by four sizes here. And as you can see, it has this neat look to have the two different photographs in the same shape. You could even have three or four different photographs in each portion of the X Factor dies. So if you want to even add more photos, you can totally do that. All right, now I'm filling in the two by four X Factor dies. And again, it's pretty easy. I kept the photos together to keep them more organized. And then I'm gluing the back of them. And it's really easy to fill in those X Factor spaces. All right, so this was done with that octagon shape die. And pretty much it fills in the entire space except for those four corners. So this is a neat die if you just want a unique look to your layout and you could even use it on a layout that doesn't use the other X Factor dies as well. And I like that you can see those green corners in the background. Of course, my last photograph is this one for the center. And again, if you wanted the photograph to fill in that entire center space, you would have to print a five by seven, but with the layering die, you can use a four by six and you can kind of see the map behind there, which I actually like. And of course you take your time and make sure it's centered. All right, I'm actually going to fill in these small triangular spaces now. Earlier you saw this die, it comes in the 4x6 X Factor set and basically instead of having to use one of those giant dies, you can cut all those little corners all at once easily with this little die and look how quick that is. And I didn't have to sit there and try to fill in that bigger die like I've done in the past, so that die is really handy. And these triangular spots are larger, so I am using the 2x4 now to get those spaces. Of course, I'm gonna be cutting with that one twice, actually. And I'm also gonna get this triangular space using the three by four X factor die. And I'm also gonna be cutting with this one twice as well. And I am using pattern paper to fill in these triangular spaces to add interest. So I ran these through the Xyron Create a Sticker Machine. I've talked about that in past videos as well 
basically you put the pieces in through the machine and it turns them into stickers and it's great for these really small pieces. It's for me, it's a lifesaver. <laughs> Otherwise it would be really difficult to glue down some of these more intricate designs, especially, but for me, it's fast and easy to just get these little pieces down and they're very sticky. And it is also repositionable, just like the other glue. All right, and as you can see, I can easily fill in these corners. And it's the last one, and I'm done. So I really love how this layout turned out, and I do consider it a little more advanced just because I was putting multiple photographs within the X Factor space, and it does take more time to plan that out. So keep that in mind that this may take more time than usual for you. But if you enjoyed watching this tutorial and love the X Factor die, be sure to like this video and you can come back to it whenever you would like. Also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We actually put up a video every week. And so if you love our tutorials, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future ones. All right, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you next time.